All right. Um, so what we're going to do today, guys, is we're just going to show you a little bit of basics of quad, um, factory quadratics. Now, the main important thing you guys need to know is our quadratics are when we have a special type of trinomial where our first term is an x squared, then we have an x, and a c, which is going to be our constant, where a, b, and c are all going to be real numbers, all right, but a cannot equal zero. All right. So what these are, these are like real numbers. So it could be anything. We could say, you know, uh, 2x squared plus 5x plus 10. That's the quadratic. Okay. But the quadratics we're going to deal with are when a equals 1. So that means my number in front of x squared is going to equal 1. So the quadratic that we're going to work in with today is x squared plus 7x plus 12. So this is going to be the quadratic we're going to work with today. Is it a quadratic? Obviously, I said it was a quadratic, right? But we notice there's three terms. We have an x squared, and our you know our three terms where our each of our numbers is a coefficient. So we have a quadratic. It's a special type of trinomial. Now, to understand how to factor quadratics, we first need to kind of understand um, a lot of times how can we get them. So one thing we worked on before was multiplying, right? Multiplying binomials. And if I said x times 4 times x plus 3, I showed you guys a lot of different ways to multiply this, right? Just by using distributive property, um, just by saying using FOIL to help you out, and the FOIL face. One of the important things was you multiply your first terms, right? Give you x squared, I'll do FOIL for this one. Multiply the outer terms. Outer terms would have been 3x. Inner terms would have been inner terms would have been uh, 4x, and then the last terms would have been 12, right? Okay, so what we're going to do when we're factoring, what we're actually doing, uh, so our final answer for this one, x squared uh, plus 7x plus 12. So you guys notice we went from two binomials to a trinomial, right? So when we're factoring, what we're doing is we're going to work backwards. I'm going to give you a trinomial, and what I'm going to want you to do is work back to finding two separate binomials. All right? So we're going to do like kind of the opposite. So I showed you a process one way. You guys, we worked on it, we practiced it, we had homework. Now we're going to try to work on the practice going backwards to undo that operation. All right? So if I was giving you a trinomial, here's the way I want you guys to kind of look at it. First of all, we know we're going to have to multiply two numbers, right? And those, whatever first two numbers, right, we know we're going to multiply the first number times the first number, right? That's part of FOIL. Mm -hmm. On those first two numbers, do you notice the first two numbers always provide us, or usually they're just going to provide us if they're written in their form, with this x squared term, all right? So in this problem, those first two numbers are going to provide us with their x squared term. So what two numbers, obviously, are going to, what are the only two numbers that can provide me to give me my x squared. If I'm going to think about this, I can rewrite it as x times x, right? It can't be 5 and 10 or anything like that. It has to be x times x. All right? So I know if I was to provide, if I was to multiply my first time and my first, I would always get x squared, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a good start. Now, we also know that when I multiply my last two numbers, the other two numbers in here, they always produce me my last, my final number. So I need to think about this and say, what two numbers multiply give me 12? And here's where we have our problem. Because for this quadratic, there's a lot of different answers for that. Right? I asked Aronde, and Aronde says 6 times 2 is one way you can multiply to get 12. Good job, Aronde. Oh, I'm sorry, 6 times 2, not right. 6 times 2 equals 12. And then Hunter says 3 times 4. And then ask Kyara, she says 12 times 1. Good job, Kyara. So each one of those numbers, when I multiply them, they all answer 12. So what is going to be the correct answer for me to put in there? Because remember, we're only looking for two more numbers, right? We just want to find our two other numbers. So then I ask, well, out of these numbers, actually, before I even do that, sorry. So to help us solve this, I'm going to show you a little diagram that will help you out. Here's this little diagram we like to call a little cross. So if you guys would write down this cross, and up top I'd like you to write C, 
on the bottom I'd like you to write B. Now again, this is only going to work when A equals 1, all right? And we have the quadratic looking in this form. Pardon the interruption. Students, those of you who write 526 will write 864. And those of you who write 992 will write DS10. Again, 526 will write 864. 992 will write DS10. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Okay. So we have C is 12, right? C is 12. So you're going to write C there. And B is 7. So we're going to write a 7 there. Then up top, I'd like you to write a multiplication symbol. And then down here, I'd like you to write an addition symbol. Okay, so what you're going to do to help you figure out what is the correct number here, you're going to do a little kind of a little puzzle game. So you're going to take all the numbers and multiply to give you 12, all right, and then you're just going to ask yourself a simple question. What two numbers multiply to give me 12, which we provided here, but that add to give me 7? And our only two answers that possibly can work for that are 3 and 4, or 4 and 3. Positive 3 and 4, right? They both have to be positive. Guess what? Since those are both positive, those are your two answers. Now, this was a pretty basic one. Is obviously, the answer was right there, right? Because I showed you to go one way. I'm showing you how to work backwards. But I wanted you guys to at least understand the process before we start getting into it. Because I know class is almost over and you guys can see this. But if you guys can at least have this diagram written down, and the process, we'll practice a lot more of it next class. Okay? Thank you.